So let's begin by talking about what is commonly referred to as the most fundamental of active record associations, which is belongs to. You'll use the belongs to association when you want to declare a record residing in some database table as belonging to another record, typically residing in some other database table. So for instance, if you are building an application which tracks arcade games. Each arcade game would logically belong to one and only one manufacturer. So for instance, one of my favorite arcade games of all time, Shinobi, was manufactured by Sega. In order to implement this sort of relationship, each record found in the games table will store its associated manufacturer's foreign key, or it, its ID. So to, to look at this as a diagram, you'll see that the, the games table is going to have things like uh, its own primary key, an ID, a name, probably a description, things like that. And additionally, it's going to store a manufacturer ID, which is an integer, and it's a foreign key which points to a specific record found in the manufacturer's table. So uh, in doing so, we always know when we load a record or an object of type game, we're going to be able to point to its associated manufacturer record found in the manufacturer's table. So next, I'll show you how to implement this within your Rails code. Okay, so what I've done is gone ahead and created a standard Rails application. And the first thing we're going to want to do to implement the belongs to relationship between the game model and manufacturer model is create the models. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the manufacturer model. I'll, I'll save a few steps here by using uh, a shortcut in which you can add the names and data types of the columns that are going to be inserted into the associated model table, which by default in this case is going to be manufacturers, plural. So I'm going to go ahead and generate this model. And uh, as you can see, it's created the migration, the model, and uh, the associated test and uh, test fixture template. So the next thing we're going to want to do is generate the game model. And I'm doing this in a specific order because I'd like to show you a, a useful shortcut which you can take advantage of when generating models and wishing to create uh, associations at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and create the game model. We're going to add a column called name of type string or varchar. And next what I'm going to do is identify the model that I would like to uh, associate with the game model, which is manufacturer. And what you can do is, in this case, is uh, state manufacturer colon references. So what that's going to do is create a uh, foreign key called manufacturer ID in the game models games table, in, inside the underlying table. So I'll go ahead and uh, do that now. And again, we've created the migration, the model, and the various test related files. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and run the migrations. Whoops, that would be bundle exec rake of course. db migrate and there we go. So we've created the manufacturers table and the games table. Now I'm just using 
the SQLite database for the purposes of this demo. So if I were to enter that database and have a quick look at the tables, you'll see the games table, the manufacturers table, and the uh, schema migrations table, which is a standard part of all Rails application databases. And if I were to have a look at manufacturers, this is the table creation statement. So ID, integer, primary key, so that's our primary key. Then we have the name, and then we have the typical created at and updated at timestamps. So next, let's have a look at the games table. Create table, games. Here's our, uh, our primary key. Here's our name, column. And then, looky here, we have our manufacturer underscore ID column and our typical timestamps. And then Rails has gone ahead and created an index on that manufacturer ID column as well. So in just a few simple commands, we've created the games model or the game model underlying games table, the manufacturer model underlying manufacturers table, and we've set up the uh, foreign key manufacturer ID inside the games table. Next, let's go ahead and implement this relationship within the model itself. With the models and corresponding tables created, I've next opened my trusty code editor, which is RubyMine, and I've opened the demo project. And under the models directory, you'll find the game and manufacturer models. So these are uh, purposefully very simple for uh, the sake of demonstration. So I'm going to go. I'm going to open them both up now, and <clears throat> you'll see at this point in time the manufacturer model is is empty, right? There's nothing, uh, and in, in for the moment it can stay empty. There's nothing you need to do in order to complete this relationship from the manufacturer model's perspective. Although, as you'll see later in the screencast. Uh, we are going to make further changes uh, to the model in order to make it even more useful. Um, but for the moment, the only thing you need to do is um, open your game model and ensure that the belongs to association is in place. Now, you might recall from a moment ago when we generated the model, the game model, and I referred to the manufacturer model using the manufacturer colon references syntax. Uh, it generated the manufacturer underscore ID foreign key within the manufacturers table, but it additionally created the relation or the association for us, or defined it, I should say, within the game model. And again, it's very simple, belongs to, colon, name of the model you would like uh, related in this fashion. So uh, with that in place, let's go ahead and open the Rails console and experiment with this uh, relationship. So I've returned to the root directory of the demo project and I'm going to enter the Rails console and notice I've passed along the uh, sandbox option because what this is going to do is allow us to uh, play in a sandbox, an experimental sandbox within uh, our application but when we exit the console it's going to roll back or do away with any database related changes that would have otherwise been persisted, right? So we're just experimenting. We do not want to pollute our development database. And therefore, we'll uh, enter the console using the, the uh, in the sandbox environment. So I'll go ahead and start the console. And in fact, when we're running in sandbox mode, you'll see this message. Any modifications you make will be rolled back on exit. Great. So first things first, let's go ahead 
and create a new manufacturer record. And that's simple enough where we just have a name column. Rails is going to handle the ID, the created at, and the updated at columns for us by default. And just one more thing, I want to save the um, returned object and I'll just, I'll save it. Let's be a little more proper here and I'll save it to a variable named manufacturer. So the uh, manufacturer uh, record has been inserted into the manufacturer's table. So that's great. Next thing we want to do is create a game record. And because that game record should be associated with a manufacturer, we're going to associate this newly created Sega record with the new game record. So I'll go ahead and create a new game. Now this is just the first of many examples which I believe are really going to demonstrate the power of active record relations. So I'm going to go ahead and give our new game a name and identify the manufacturer that we'd like to associate with this game, which is Sega, which is stored in this manufacturer uh, variable. Now notice the convenient syntax that Rails provides to you uh, when you're making this sort of association. The foreign key, yes, is called manufacturer underscore ID, but Rails understands that when you refer to a foreign key in this man manner, it's going to look for a, a model just called, in this case, manufacturer. So I'm going to go ahead and execute the uh, command, the creation command. So again, game create, we're passing along the name and we're passing along the object which we had previously created, the, the manufacturer object. And if you just have a quick look at the insertion statement, you'll see the, here's the game name, and sure enough, here's the manufacturer ID of the previously created manufacturer. So if I go ahead and traverse that relation, you'll see I can call game because we saved the created object uh, using the game variable. And if I were to execute just game.manufacturer, manu an object of type manufacturer is going to be returned, and that's certainly useful. But even more useful is the, the ability to traverse this relation. I want the name of Shinobi's manufacturer. So I'll go ahead and hit enter, and sure enough, it is Sega. So as you can see, not only does Rails and Active Record provide you with a very uh, convenient way in which you can create these relations, create the belongs to relation using very succinct syntax, but you can also very easily traverse the association as well. Right? So this is, the, again, this is the first of what I think are many examples in the screencast that are really going to demonstrate just how powerful and how convenient this syntax and these active record capabilities re really are. So with that said, let's move on to the next type of relation, which is has one.